Hey guys, welcome on into tonight's live. If you're new to the channel, hi, hello, welcome. And welcome back to our subscribers as well. I should say hi to everybody. If you are new to the channel, we do talk true crime here daily. My name is Tanya or Titanium Built, and thank you guys for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. If this is your third time joining me today, we've spent the whole day together. It's like, it was like a whole day of lives. So you're welcome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, if you don't mind taking a second to hit the like button, it does help the video and the content get out there um, into the algorithm. And I know we all bother you with it, but it is free to do. So please tip your server the free way. <laughs> um, and if you guys want to join our channel membership, we do have a great community here. We would love to have you be a part of it. So I will put that in the chat and I'll put it out throughout the live. So let's see who we got tonight. Um, I did do a live today over Ruby Frank's sentencing hearing and Jody Hildebrandt. So that's there's a live if you guys want to check that out. I think it was about an hour long. I think most of the lives I think today were about an hour long. Um, hey, Jan. Hey, Ladybug. Hey, Mary Beth. Um, so then I did we did the live over, um, of course, Audrey um, Cunningham. Today we did the press conference. So we are back tonight to discuss what happened and everything. So hey, Catherine. And Nancy Grace finally got on... Um, the bandwagon with us. So she's here to tell us what, what she thinks. And I um, haven't got a chance to watch it yet. So I'm, I'm going to listen to it with you guys. My heart is, my heart is broken. All autos has broken for this beautiful young lady. I know I cannot believe her dad is a, a S offender. Her let, or let, I'm sorry, let her dad, I let an S offender live on their property and babysitter. Yeah. It says the grandparents live there too. Yep. So why wasn't she with him? That's what I said. I'm like, why wasn't she with grandma? Because I guess grand, the grandfather was um, a captain of a ship. I guess they're all like fish, fishing people. And so he was away a lot of the time. So when he was gone, and this came from Audrey's mother. So when he was gone, everything was kind of like a free for all. But when everything, when he was home, everybody was like tightened up. House was clean. Things went a certain way. So... I'm wondering if he was maybe on the ship and then I don't know where she would have been, but hey, Otto, though. <laughs> hey, Otto. We got Ladybug in here. Yankee Kyle's in here. Carrie, Patricia. Well, welcome in. I know this is a sad, this is a sad case. And I said I would light the candle until we found her, but I'm going to, I'm light, I'm lighting it. Even though they found her. Hey, Mountain Mama. This is not, um, hey, Cheryl. This was not the, um, the outcome that anybody wanted for this little girl, obviously, no one, no one wanted this outcome. But I think we all kind of thought this was going to be the outcome because of the way that they were searching that river. You know, they were really hard on that river. Um, he lived in a camper. So if he was going to hide her somewhere, you know, that probably would have been the spot. I mean, not like that would have been a smart place, but, you know, it would have been a place. Um, and she wasn't in his vehicle. So I, other than if he would have, you know, did something with her and buried her. That's where they were looking, you know? Um, but I don't think they would have found her anywhere at this point alive, I think. But hey, Tamara, Ina, Tamarina. Oh, I like that. Hey, Linda. So welcome in, everybody. It's good to see you guys. Hey, Dreamcatcher. <laughs> Usually you come in a little bit later, and I, I'm like always in a video when you come in. So good to see you. He does have predatory eyes. I said that about him last night. So let's, yeah, let's pull up a picture of him. So, um, before we do that, I do have another channel. If you guys want to subscribe to it, we'd love to have you over there. It's going to be a little bit different than true crime. It's just going to be like a life vlog, um, whatever we want to talk about, a free-for-all. It's going to be a flipping free-for-all over there. <laughs> hey, for, other, for the algorithm, I appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, let me get over here. I did write some stuff down. I was trying to remember some stuff. So, um, But as you guys, I don't know if you guys um, have heard of the Athena Strand case, but this is like the same. It's, it's like a repeat almost. Um, but as most of you, I, I think everyone knows at this point, you know, th that they did find Audrey um, and she was no longer alive. They found her in the Trinity river um, search dive teams found her today. This afternoon, they held a press conference at five o'clock. Sheriff Loins came on and he um, gave us the details, like what he could give us. And I think that he has been very, very um, kind in what he's done. Very reserved. Um, he had bronchitis for a while. That's why he wasn't in this, the first couple of press conferences um, when they were like, he's not here. I was like, well, where's he at? 
It's because he had bronchitis. He couldn't speak. So I understand that. You're having a Pepsi, Cheryl, and you never drink pop? I drink soda too much, Cheryl. That's my one thing I wish I could give up is soda and vaping. But I'll never give up vaping. Hey, Samantha, welcome in. Welcome in. Um, so basically, we all know who they're looking for in this case. Don Stephen McDo McDaniel, McDougal, McDougal. I keep saying his wrong, my name wrong, McDougal. I love it when I say the, the suspect's name's wrong. It makes me kind of laugh because um, it would make them really mad if they knew that. Age 42, here is the ugly mug. You know, we've all seen it, but I'm going to show you it again because if I had to look at this today, I feel like everybody needs to look at this today. What about this picture says, I want to leave my child with you? Or what about this picture says, he looks like a nice person to take my kid to school? Or what about this picture says anything? Like, I feel like I wouldn't even, he wouldn't even tell me to buckle up in his car, let alone, let alone you know what I mean? Like, he, the, it gets better. I got another one. Imagine that coming at you, hot in the inbox. Got a picture for you, babe. That's what you see. He ain't scared, but I am. I mean, the tattoo, he's, <laughs> he says he ain't, but I am. And then, you know, we've got this one here. My Lord. <sighs> My God, he's scary. He's scary. He's scary. I mean, I'm freaking a grown woman. And if he came at me or came even near, if he came near me, I wouldn't be scared. You know what I mean? I would just be like, what are you doing, dude? But if he came at me, I would be terrified. Mountain mom said I wouldn't love my goldfish with them. Exactly. Well, and just out of, you know, Audrey's mom's mouse, she said, I don't even leave, leave my puppy out of my sight. Well, who the hell gave him? The, I'm just, I'm, I'm stunned. I need the answer to that. Like whose idea was this? <laughs> I guess it was Joshua's, but you know, I don't, well, was it Joshua's? Because we've heard that Tabitha has custody, the grandmother. So wouldn't it be the grandmother's doing? Wouldn't that fall back on the grandmother? Like if she had custody? Yeah, Cheryl, he'll have what's coming to him. Oh yeah, he should be scared. He should be probably throwing that feces around the, uh, the jail cell now, really acting crazy. Can you imagine when he gets the uh, search warrant or the, um, the arrest affidavit given to him? Here you go. You are now being arrested for the capital M of Audrey Cunningham. Not just the disappearance, the abduction disappearance, the actual capital. So that's a DP. And in Texas, they don't play around. Now, I wish they would take them out of the jail and redo the perp walk. If we could do that, then I'd be, I'd be that would make me a little happier. And I'm sure they'd probably do that, you know, accommodate people. Them guys from Texas, they accommodate. Um, also, I found this today. Um, this is where the school bus stop was that she was supposed to be going to. So I'm assuming that the kids probably like go right, right around here, like where the sign is. They probably just stand there like on the corner. And that's where um, they didn't stop that day. They didn't stop. For the algorithm, yeah, God bless Texas and his old hands. That's a song, I think. Yeah. What is that song? I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm singing it in my head. I'm trying to think of the song, but I can't think of it. Um, yeah, he's he's a scary dude. He's a scary looking dude. There is some pictures on Facebook of him. Um, he, are these them? Yeah, okay. So he tried to, um, trying to hook up with this girl via Facebook. Um, I think it's Facebook. Um, what's it called? Facebook dating or whatever it is. I, I don't, I don't know. I've never Facebook dated before, but it's like Facebook has this new like dating feature that you can sign up for. I know it's asked me to do that before. And I'm like, I don't, I don't do that. Um, I don't need a date, but apparently he did. And she shared his pictures and she's an anonymous participant. And I understand why. And this isn't liked by me. This isn't my picture. This is just Facebook. I'm just showing you. Um, So here is Stephen 42 and all of his glory. And then there's him there. He must not want to show his eyes. You know, I can understand that. Then he's got one to the side. So you can tell that he does have a problem with that. He does have a, 
So his eye, one of his eyes um, is like a little funny. And I'm not here to judge anybody with about an eye. Look at, look at your girl here. But he, there's a difference between owning it and like accepting it and trying to hide it. And this dude's still trying to hide that he has that flaw. And buddy, that's not your first and only flaw. That's the least of your flaws. The least of them. Um, now there you go. So you can see like how it's like a little bit funny there. Um, I mean, we all got something funny with us, but I'm just saying, yeah, like a lazy eye or his goes to like the side. I don't know if that's considered a lazy eye. Cause I, we all have like a lazier eye than the other. Um, this one is mine and that's the one that's real. I'm like, perfect. Despicable and disgusting degenerate. Yes. Marianne couldn't say it better myself. Yes, I need to get my red flags out so I could be waving them, waving them right now. So those are his dating pictures. Oh, very ugly man, if you ask me. On the inside and the out. And the tattoos are just the icing on the cake. So um, on the last couple of lives, we talked about his prior charge from 2007, he has multiple charges, but this was one that we had found that I had found and we talked about from 2007 and the charge was enticing a minor, enticing a child. Um, so I actually have the arrest warrant for that charge and it's pretty bad, but it, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. That's only a page too. Um, so this is what I've been showing you guys about the law in Texas. This is for Texas. This is their law for enticing a child or their definition for it. So their definition for that is a person commits an offense. If with the intent to interfere with the lawful custody of a child younger than 18 years, he knowingly entices, persuades, or takes the child from the custody of the parent or guardian or person standing in the steed of the parent or guardian of such, such child. So in this case, it had been the grandmother, I guess. Um, let's read more. An offense under this section is a class B misdemeanor, unless it is shown on the trial of the offense that the actor intended to commit a felony Yep, against the child in which event, event an offense under this section is a felony of the third degree. So it has now been upped from, well, it would be because he's going to get enticing a child. So it's going to be upped to felony from a misdemeanor. I'm sure that that will be on, that will be on the record, you know, on the part of the arrest. So, hey, Trisha. Hey, Susan. He was in Swingers Club on his Facebook. I thought I saw, I heard something about that. What the heavens? Who would want to swing with that guy? No way, Jose. Not a day in my life. Paige Malone. I like that name. I like your name. Thankful to be here. I like that. It's like, I don't know. It rolls off the tongue. Paige Malone. How could anyone want to date him? Linda? <laughs> you couldn't even, you couldn't give me enough money to even hang out with him for an hour. And I'm talking be prior to his offense. You couldn't pay me enough. I wouldn't do it. He makes me nervous. So I was telling, asking you guys in the beginning of the live, if any of you guys followed the Athena Strand case, um, her body was found November 30th of 2022. Um, or I'm sorry, in December, her body was found, but she went missing on, in November. We covered this, the, the case here on the channel. Um, basically, she was with her stepmother. Um, they got in a little bit of a little argument. I think she was 11 as well, maybe nine. I want to say, oh, I should know that for sure. But um, I want to say, let me see if it'll tell me. Um, she was either nine or 11, but her and her mom got into like a little bit of a spat and she went outside and that was the last time her stepmother saw her. She was from paradise, Texas. What a name. And, um, this little girl was also found by the Trinity river. So very, very crazy that we have two little girls both unalived, both of the Trinity River. I'm trying to pull up a picture of her so I can show you guys. So maybe that will help. If you guys are um, not sure who I'm talking about. Because as soon as you see her, you'll probably be like, oh, okay. Um, let me see if this will open up to where it's big. Okay. 
There you go. So this little girl is the one I'm talking about. Even if I was offered money, I'd be, yeah, I'd be fine. Yeah, me too. I'd be quiet. I'd be like, no, thank you. I'm fine. I like to, I like myself over here without whatever you got going on. But yeah, this is the Athena Strand case. So this one, it, so this little girl was found Trinity River. Audrey was found in, in the Trinity River. So no more Trinity Rivers. We're done. We're done with that. We're done with the Trinity River. Anybody else puts a, a little baby in there. I'm, I'm coming to Texas. With my hat. I'm bringing my cowboy hat. And my poofy vest. Like the sheriff. I like his I like his vest. Okay. So this is a like a, a screenshot of a paper. So I got to like kind of like blow it up. But I wanted to read this to you guys before we went into the Nancy Grace um, episode. Because I thought this was pretty significant. Because this is from his prior charge from 2007. So this is going to be like the part of the um, arrest affidavit for him. Um, and this is dated, it looks like July 25th. I'm getting older and putting my glasses. Mm. <laughs> I know I'm, I know I'm getting older when I'm doing that. July 25th, 20, 2007. Um, and this is for the district um, clerk. And I can never say this. I don't know the name of it. Brazoria County, Texas. Um, and this is the warrant of his arrest. Attempted, attempted. So this is attempted indecency with a child enhanced. The grand jury for the county of Bar Brazora, state of Texas, duly selected, impaneled, sworn, charged, and organized as such for the district court of said county upon their oaths present in and to said court that Don Stephen McDougall, McDougall, here and after styled defendant, on or about the 31st day of March 2007 and before the present presentment, of the indictment in the county and state for said did then with the uh, with the specific intent to commit the offense of indecency with the child and with the intent to arouse or gratify the sexual desire of the defendant did then their attempt to intentionally or knowingly engage in s contact with redacted a child younger than 17 years and not the defendant's spouse by removing redacted from the bed where redacted was sleeping and getting in bed with redacted and pulling her pajama bottoms and, you know, down. So, <sighs> this ain't the first time he did it. I don't, I don't know. People should know their friends better, I guess, you know. That's a good question. Jan, I wonder where Aries is at, actually. I got a spot on my glasses. Um, it just says, and the grand juries in for said do further present that before the commission of the offense alleged above, on or about the date, on or about the 31st day of October 2006, in the cause number in the 253rd Judicial um, District Court of Liberty County, Texas, the defendant was convicted of the felony of assault on a public servant. So then they go back and they're like, <laughs> in 2000 or um, in 2006, October 31st, that's Halloween. Hello. Um, he was convicted of a felony of assault on a public servant. Cool guy. Cool guy. I wonder, DM, if you have to go and put all notifications on since I went live three times today. I've been really going live today. I've been giving you guys the news. Won't people ever try to better themselves? Marianne, I don't think so. He makes my ex look like a saint. Mine too, actually. Mine too. That's true. That's the truth. Uh, let me see if there's anything going on on Twitter before we move on to Nancy. But I think that we pretty much got um, everything, you know. I got everything that we needed. It says, okay, never mind. I thought that was something new, but it's not. What's this? Wow. Okay. Look at this. Look at this dude. Okay. Look at this. We've got him all the way back. Look how young he is in the first one. And then just look at him go. Look at him go. This guy's got more mug shots than a JCPenney Christmas photo album. He's got more photos than anybody at the county jail. We have our loser judges here in Texas like anywhere else. Swifty, I bet you do. You, I bet you do. Well, I can tell you about 10 of them. Unless he had the same one. So 
if you're friends with somebody, best buds, you let them stay in the camper in the backyard, trust them on your property, trust them on your property at least. Wouldn't you know about at least a few of these arrests? Throwing back a couple cold ones. You know, the tattoo there hanging out. Bud Light if he's lucky. Steel Reserve if he's not. You're meaning to tell me that they did not shoot the shit and say, oh, I've been arrested. And the other one's going, I've been arrested too. How many times have you been arrested? I've been arrested 20. Me, I've been arrested 20 too. These are 10 that we know of right now. He, there might be more. But he's losing a lot more than his hair in these pictures. He's going to be losing his life. The, the new one. This is the new one, 2024. But I bet you there'll be another one out when he's booked for the this crime. Like the actual unaliving. He used to be a small little dude. I wonder when he started getting the tax. Wish we could see. Wish we could see the... Um, like see his arms better in the pictures. Just because I'm just curious. I wonder, I mean, I know they're prison tats. I'm, I can tell a prison tat from anybody. Exactly, Susan. Like someone, yeah. These people allowed him to live on the property. In my state, the dad and grandparents would be charged for child endangerment and neglect. They should be. I hope they all are. I hope they all are. All of them. All of them. I don't even care if you weren't there. I don't care if you were on a boat somewhere. That's your child. Um, and... You're, you are allowing him to take care of her. You know he is. Point blank, period. The dude's been arrested a lot. Two pictures in 2024. Like, those are different pictures, it looks like. Um, dude looks like maybe he's been arrested twice. And this year? Good golly, Miss Jolly. Okay, I'm going to check, see if Nancy put up a video. Because if she didn't, that's really weird. Okay, she didn't. But I got this. Sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. Um, so she it might come on later this evening, but you're gonna hear it here first because I have the I have the um podcast version. So let me get that pulled up. And she is a day behind, so she's gonna go over the whole case except for what we've heard today, pretty much. Now I'm assuming old Nancy's gonna come out with a video tomorrow and say, we got more news, you know, um, she will usually follow a case all the way through. That's what we, that's what we do. Me and Nance put her back. I put her back there today. She's back in her spot. Hmm. Yeah. War flair. I believe that. So I heard earlier when I, what was I listening to? It was like a news station or something. It was something reputable, but something about the, maybe the mother never had custody of her. Now, I don't know other than if you test positive after you have a child, and I'm not saying this is what happened, that's the only thing that I can think of is why someone would take your baby away. I mean, unless you're physically harming the baby inside the hospital, you know what I mean. But like, I mean, you only have to be in the hospital for a day, day and a half nowadays, two days tops. They don't even leave you in there that long. <clears throat> you're literally walking out like and. They're cutting the umbilical cord, it seems like, nowadays. I feel like there needs to be more classes. Maybe. Really? For back support? No, the mother didn't have custody. She never Yeah, I heard she never did, so I'm wondering. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and play this here. We all know this little, you know, what happened, the events that happened, but if you guys have any questions, let me know in the chat and, you know, we'll answer them for you. So I'm going to go ahead and play this so we can, um, all go to bed at a decent hour tonight and I'll put some pictures up. So you guys have something to look at as well. I just have to download them. Ready over for to discovery? Stream. Oh, sorry. Download them over to StreamYard. Ready. Um, the volume, I don't have control over Nancy's volume, so I'm going to try not to talk too much, but you know me, I'm a talker. Um, and I'm going to fast forward through the commercials here for us. Um, if you guys don't mind just taking a second, hit the like button. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We do talk true crime daily here. Um, and I am Tanya. If you guys weren't here in the beginning of the live to know my name, it's nice to meet everybody. For discovery, South Seas hit crime drama. Welcome back to the I'll find some pictures. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. An 11 year old little girl. Just let that soak in. Just 11 
years old. Let's see what grade that would be. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Fifth grade, Max. Fifth grade is missing. Of course, I'm talking about 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham, missing out of Texas. She goes missing en route to school. As we go to air right now, we are learning that there is a gathering of LA law enforcement around a nearby area. Our eyes are on that as we proceed. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. Listen to the mom. I would just like to get the word out that um, we would we would like to have her come home. Um, it's not like her to, you know, just uh, run off or disappear. She has a lot of loving family. She has so many people that love her and adore her. Um, she is a very well taken care of child. Uh, <laughs> And we just, we miss her. We, we don't understand. And any and all help uh, would be greatly appreciated. And I just, I want the word spread around as far as possible. If you see her, please contact, you know, your local police. What do you do when your child goes missing? Run through the house screaming for the child, look in the yard, start running in the neighborhood, call 911. This mother, Cassie Matthews, begging for our help, begging for your help to find her 11-year-old little girl, Audrey. And this is what Ellie has to say. Listen. Um, I want to say that investigators are following active leads based on tips that the, and, and evidence that we have gathered. The videos submitted to investigators by the community have been very helpful. We're looking for and asking the public's help for additional video on FM 3126 that shows the highway. This video would have been on Thursday, February 15th, between 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. Oh, my stars, it's like a needle in a haystack asking for video of the highway. But listen, it works. Brian Carly Russell, perfect example. What happened? Carly Russell to the four Idaho students? Well, I've been there myself. There is a 7-Eleven gas station at, it's, it's not very populated, but at a particular corner near the King Road crime scene. You got to come to, I believe it's a four-way stop right there. The clerk at the 7-Eleven herself sat there and went through surveillance video hour after hour after hour on her own time, I might add, and catches Brian Koberger's car going by around 3 a.m. in the morning, the night of the murders. 4 a.m. in the morning, the night of the murders. And that, among other things, cracked that case wide open. So it is possible. It is possible for anybody with a dash cam, a ring phone, anybody with access to any video surveillance along this area needs to come forward now. We are looking for an 11-year-old helpless little girl. Is she alive? Is she dead? Is she being raped right now? Is she being tormented? Is she alone? Is she crying out for her mother? Where is this child? I hate to ask jurors this. As a matter of fact, in the law, you are disallowed from asking a juror to place themselves in the shoes of the victim. But juror. think about it. What if this is your child, your 11-year-old little girl missing? With me, an all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now. First, to Carla Castillo, joining us, anchor, morning EP, KBTX News, Carla Thank you for being with us. Let's just start the morning. Audrey disappears. This has just happened Feb 15. There's still time. There is still time. Tell me about that morning. First of all, where does Audrey Cunningham live? What's the jurisdiction? Where did this happen? Where's Livingston? So this is in, um, it is about 
70 miles north of Houston. We are based in Bryan, Texas. That's where I live. And that's about an hour and a half away from us. So this is in an area that many of our community members, uh, they go to Lake Livingston for recreation purposes, for hunting, things like that. Uh, But this is an area that is just north of Houston. And you think about, I, I know as a mom, I think about February 15th. I'm thinking it's the day after Valentine's Day. My kiddo has just celebrated Valentine's Day. And you, this is not something that's on your mind. And that's not what you asked me, but it's very heartbreaking to think about this happening, especially, you know, in a time when we're thinking about love and friendship and such just a, a, a terrible time. And so what they hold, think, hold, pause, pause, Carla Castillo. I don't want, I, I, I want all the information you have to give me, but jumping off what you just said, let's analyze it. Cheryl McCollum joining me, founder director of the Cold Case Research Institute, star of Zone 7 hit podcast and a forensics expert. Uh, we were in the trenches together for many, many years. Cheryl McCollum, right off the bat, let's hit it. Uh, 70 miles north of Houston. That says to me, it's probably not a perv from Houston. Number one, that's too far. They're not going to drive 70 miles to find a victim. Mark that out. But Lake Livingston wreck. A lot of people with vacation homes on the lake know the area. It's near Audrey's home. I could see that. A perp coming from there. Thoughts? In a nutshell. Absolutely. You're cr- they did end up finding her about 10 miles away from her home. Correct. You've got that reservoir that's over 800 acres. The perpetrator most likely knows this area. There's no doubt about it. Nancy, you and I both know the first three hours are critical. This perpetrator, if he took her prior to the bus stop and the family did not realize she was not at school, roughly had nine hours. Which is making me sick. I haven't even gotten that far, but you're right. I'm going to circle back to Carla Castillo on that. Yeah, she didn't show up at school and nobody called mommy. Oh, hey, I get a note immediately at 8 Oh, six. If the children are not where they're supposed to be at their school, you darn right I do. So why nothing? You can't text me? Why? Okay, that's a whole nother can of worms talking about the lake. How does it play in? Listen to Sydney Sumner Crime Online. The town of Livingston, Texas is about 70 miles northeast of Houston and a place that seems perfect to raise a family. Nearby Lake Livingston State Park provides outdoor activities from fishing to boating, swimming, and hiking with over 83,000 surface acres. 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham lives with her dad and grandparents about five miles from the lake in a quiet neighborhood where neighbors still know one another by name. Audrey walks to her bus stop most mornings and has made friends with some neighborhood pets that she always stops to pet on her way to the bus stop or on the way home. That's really good information. She stops on the way to the bus stop. She meanders and pets animals on the way. Also very significant. Um, Let me go to Lana Shadwick, uh, attorney, former Harris County judge and prosecutor. You can find her at lanashadwick.com. You know, Lana, also the pop is about, uh, just wrote it down, a little, oh, almost 6,000. 5,829 people. Almost. Almost. And that says a lot to me. As opposed to somewhere like Chicago, Detroit, New York City, Atlanta, you've got a much, much smaller suspect pool. Well, not only a small suspect pool, but the community is just beside themselves. They're grieving. Um, And there's no way any accused can get a fair trial here. That's that's another issue. Atlanta, you're talking like a true judge and former prosecutor, but we're putting the cart before the horse. Trial, trial. Let me just find the girl first. Dr. Bethany Marshall, you heard what Cheryl McCollum just said the first three hours. Dr. Bethany Marshall, high-profile psychoanalyst, joining us out of L.A. at drbethanymarshall.com. I heard the mom. I heard the mom, Cassie Matthews, unlike Susan Smith, who was blubbering and snotting and carrying on after she murdered her boys, This mom sounds real. Nancy, she's genuine. She's distraught. She does not know what to do. This mother has no idea what happened. I can hear that in her voice. Um, And in terms of the kidnapping, you know, stranger abductions, are more rare than abductions at the hand of non, non-custodial caregivers. So, you know, when they move in from the lake um, towards family members, I would wonder in this town of 5,000 people, are there relatives scattered about? Are there people who take care of this child? Would she 
meanders to the bus stop? Are there other people who kind of like, as you said, they watch after her, but are any of them caregivers? Are any of them babysitters? I think that would be like a very important question. When diverse topics become the victim of gear, that's 25. Eddie. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Guys, we are talking about the disappearance of an 11-year-old girl out of Texas, Livingston, pot less than 6,000, much smaller community. Where is Audrey? What more do we know? Listen. On the afternoon of Thursday, February 15, Audrey Cunningham doesn't arrive home at her usual time. Family members look around for her, assuming she got distracted on her walk home from the bus stop. As they look over the neighborhood... I have a question. As he's pondering for the last year, you know, I'm sure he, it's been a while, you know, he's been wanting to do this to her or do something to her. And in my opinion, maybe he did do something to her prior and she was going to tell. And that's why this happened on this day. Um, but he wasn't just conditioning her. Like T. Sal said, she, he was also doing this to the mother. And I fully believe that he was going to try to put this on the mom. Because, you know, her mom hasn't been in her life. And she, he's been talking to her for six months. So I'm wondering just how long he's been wanting to do this. It's it's disgusting. It's scary. And thank goodness for his dumb ass. Yeah, I'll take her to school. And then, you know, does this on a day where he's supposed to take her to school. And then he tells them where he went afterwards. And that's where they find her. So... Thank God he is dumb, like most criminals, but the officers did a wonderful job in this case. And search the wood line behind her house that leads to the lake. Panic sets in as nobody has seen Audrey walking home from the bus stop. Police are notified at 5.30 p.m. and an Amber Alert is issued for 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham. Okay, sad to say, day late, dollar short. Why? It's not L.E., law enforcement. It's not the parents' fault. It's not mommy or daddy's fault. It's not grandma's fault. It's the school's fault because they did not tell the parents she did not make it to school that morning. What does that mean? That means the perp has a good nine, ten hours lead. Think about it. Ten hours, ten hours, nine hours times 60 miles an hour. That's a lot of miles, right? For your little girl to be in the car with a perp? Lana Shadwick, what school district is this? It's Livingston ISD, and parents in the small town, um, small county are asking, why the heck did I not know that my child got to school or didn't make it that day? There's some kind of automated system whereby it impersonally calls and says, you know, there's, there's some kind of system that just says child didn't show up today or something. I got a question for you, Lana Shadwick. By the way, guys, Lana is a high profile lawyer in this jurisdiction, Livingston, Texas, former Harris County judge, and prosecutor. Uh, You can find her at lanashadwick.com. Lana, the notice I get is email and text. I get both. But I'm wondering if this automated system that Livingston Independent School District has, could it be a phone call? Could it be a call to the home and it just takes a message and nobody's there? I understand it was a phone call. Maybe it's a text message also. And absolutely, whether it's a text message that's automated or a phone call, you can make it and nobody's looking at it. Well, this is what I'm understanding that, hey, joining me right now is Chris McDonough, former homicide detective, has been on many, many cases where a child goes missing. I found him during the Brian Koberger investigation. We're still waiting for that trial to ever happen. And his (laughs) <laughs> YouTube channel called The Interview Room. And, and that's, you know, I was telling you earlier about that gas station where the clerk saw the video and told cops. That's where I first saw the gas station on the interview room because he was driving about one and a half miles an hour all around uh, Moscow, Idaho. And I saw it. I'm like, bang. 
and then I went to it later. That's how I found out about it through Chris McDonough. Chris McDonough, I just got, thank you for joining us. I just got off the phone double checking a statistic with my longtime friend and colleague. You all know him well. He's the gold standard, Mark Class. And he gave me the stat. Did you know, Chris McDonough? I hope you're sitting down. You may need to lay down for this one. Over 30% of child abductions are school related at the bus stop, going to the bus stop, walking to school, walking home, taking the bus home, taking the bike home. 30% plus of all child abductions are school transport related. What about that, McDonough? That is definitely a shocking statistic, Nancy. And, you know, the fact that that statistic is so high in today's society uh, just causes us to, you know, just wait and pause and ponder what, you know, exposure our children are having to subjects who, who feel that they need to take them. And See, Nancy, that, I, I don't find that shocking at all. I, I really respect Well, guys, Christmas. you're hearing Dr. Bethany Marshall, high-profile psychoanalyst, joining us out of L.A. Please jump in, Dr. Bethany. I so respect Chris McDonough, but and it's true it's shocking on one level, but on another, uh -huh. it's not shocking. School grounds, bus stops, they are feeding grounds for predators. Where is a predator, where is a child molester, a pedophile going to work? A daycare, a school, maybe they come to become the choir director at the church, a camp counselor. They are going to gravitate anywhere where there are large groups of children. So, you're Can I just say, I mean, just a, I, I don't have kids. This is just a, a person coming at y'all without a kid. But maybe when you have to drop your kid off at like a bus stop, maybe you don't drop them off. Maybe you just leave them in the car with you, keep them warm, and you just wait on the bus. I mean, how long does it usually take to wait on the bus? You know, 10 minutes, five minutes. I mean, it would be worth it to have make sure that your child gets on that bus. You physically see your child get on that bus. So, you you know, and then there's a camera usually on the bus. So, I don't know. I'm a, I would be a helicopter parent, but that was just, that's just a thought. You know, um, my, I had a brother that was 16 when I was nine. So, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he was nine years older than me, eight years older than me. So, it was kind of like having an extra dad almost, you know, cause, and he was so big. So my mom would trust me with him, but, but never by myself. I don't know. She was a helicopter parent too, I guess. <laughs> Your child is not safest at church, at school, at summer camp. Or have them do and a I lift. always say no one should be more interested in your child than you. So just because you have somebody visiting the house and showing interest and, you know, a group Catherine. of people gathering lovingly around your child, Charity. you still have to look very carefully at who those people are. I've handled case after case after case where children go missing en route to the bus stop, at the bus stop, on the way home from school, to school, you name it. And one that really sticks in my mind is a little girl. I'll never get her name out of my head. Aliana Jeffries. Listen. Cleveland police asking the community for help finding a missing teenager. 14-year-old Aliana DeFries is developmentally challenged. So even though she is physically 14, she's mentally and emotionally about the age of an 8 or 9-year-old. Aliana DeFries is sweet, outgoing, and very trusting. Her mother, Denisha Cooper, put her on the bus at 6.38 a.m. Surveillance video shows Aliana getting off the bus a short time later. Surveillance video from a business shows DeFreeze and another girl outside of McDonald's. And later video shows Aliana DeFreeze outside True Gospel Missionary Baptist Church, where Christopher Whitaker approaches DeFreeze and leads her away from the church. Surveillance video then shows Whitaker leading DeFreeze through a field. And then what happened? After leading Aliana DeFreeze through a field, Christopher Whitaker takes the 14-year-old to an abandoned house where he rapes the girl. Whitaker then uses a Black & Decker drill, a Phillips head screwdriver, a nut driver, a box cutter, and a hammer to beat and stab Aliana DeFries to death. DeFries dies as a result of stab wounds and multiple blunt force injuries. DeFries' body is found in the abandoned house, but has to be identified by DNA. Whitaker is tried, convicted, and sentenced to death for the murder of 14-year-old Aliana DeFries. We know that that morning, the morning that Audrey Cunningham, just 11 years old, gets on, supposed to get on the bus. She net, it's not that she disappears from school. 
She never even got on the bus. Listen to Rachel Bonilla, Crime Stories. Discovering Audrey Cunningham never got on the bus, police ask for help from the community. Investigators ask for security video people might have from the area or of the vehicle of interest, a dark blue 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. They also have a person of interest, the last person known to be with Audrey Cunningham, Don Stephen McDougal. Lana Shadwick, high-profile lawyer, joining us out of Livingston, this jurisdiction in Texas. How far from the family home to the bus stop? Half a mile from what I've seen on um, social media. And you know what else? Uh, Let me throw this to you. Dr. Bethany, Chris McDonough, Carla Castillo, Lana Shadwick, anybody. We would typically walk home from school every day. It was a mile. But to get to school, we'd walk two blocks to the bus stop. But in this day and age, a half a mile, that's a pretty good walk for a a, a little girl first thing in the morning. Carla Castillo, do we know what time she typically left the home to get to the bus stop? Uh, No, not officially, unfortunately. But I know in some of our rural communities, we do have kiddos who go out there a little bit earlier, 645 and, and earlier, because of the time it takes to walk to the bus and then for the bus to get to the school. Well, not only is a half a mile a long walk for an eight year old, this is not along pa- along pastures and rural roads. This is in front of houses where the same people see her day after day after day. What if there's a predator in that neighborhood? Remember Chanel? Uh, who the predator was, was in the neighborhood. In garbage- uh, ma'am, he was in the neighborhood. He was living with her. Can and the perpetrator was somebody who lived. Chanel Petro Nixon. Yes. Yes. The perpetrator lived in. Sorry to interrupt again, but how how far did you guys have to walk to get to the bus stop? Mine was right out the front door. I lived in a subdivision. I mean, I guess, man, I didn't even want to walk to the end of the driveway. I thought that was a long walk. Damn, I was spoiled. Um, but I know kids that have to walk a little bit further, but everywhere, I mean, where I went to school, they literally stopped at pretty much everyone's house. If you lived beside somebody, maybe you would jump on, you know, like that, but it was never a, a half a mile walk. Or even a, a mile or half a mile. Now, kids shouldn't even have to walk that far to get to their bus. They should be pulling up in front of their house and picking them up. Even if it tacks on a little bit more time. It took me 40 minutes to get to school every morning. But, you know, I'm, I made it there sometimes. <laughs> T. Sal says my school was across the street. Oh, you guys had that good property across the street school. <laughs> From the school. <laughs> you just walk over there. Man. But, yeah, but if you have that T. Salas, you can't get away with skipping school. They were like, get your butt over there. You have plenty of time. So yeah, let me know where you guys, how long it took you guys to get to school. It took us 40 minutes because I live so far from the actual school, but we they picked us up right in front of our home. In the apartment building, so he saw her repeatedly over time. Little Jessica Lunsford, remember, buried with her little pet dolphin um, um, stuffed animal. You know what? I'm going to pause this again because I, I, I have a great business, gr- business idea for one of y'all, and I had to pause this just to say it. If you live in an area like a subdivision, you know, or a housing complex that you're like, you're a trustworthy person, all the neighbors know you, you know, I mean, if you're that person, like, you know, you're just very, that people know you, your kids play with other kids. They are all like on the soccer team together, that whole thing. Do you know how good of a business thing that would be for one car to have to stand in like the drive, like the school drive up pickup line and the, the drop off, you just charge people like you would a lift. You pick up all the kids, get a minivan, get a bus, like a little mini bus. You take them to school. That way they know that they're all safe. They get picked up in their home. They get picked up right at home, just like a lift. Maybe they need to make that for a lift, but it's like a bus lift. So that more people are accountable, you know, and they come to your home and pick you up. I'm thinking here. I'm thinking. Patty cornered. From her home. Patty Corner, who saw her. Who was a registered sex offender. Cooey, remember him? Jay Cooey. Yeah, may he rot in hell. But, you know, you're reminding me, Dr. Bethany, of something I would always tell jurors. Perps covet that which they see. In other words, that's why you look close to home. Then you move out, then you move out, then you move out. So, yes, absolutely. Well, that's why when children are abducted and killed, they're they're usually buried within a quarter mile of the family's home. 
because it's children in that area. The Delphi murders, remember, it was a man who worked in a pharmacy that found like little Abigail, you know, accosted Abigail and her friend because he saw them come in and out again and again. In this case, Dr. Bethany is completely correct. Who in the hay would drive this child to school when she was running late? typically leaving around 7 a.m. in the morning, which is also significant. In a nutshell, Chris McDonough, because violent crimes usually don't happen that early in the morning. Agree, disagree? Agree. And this is why, that to me, that 30% is so significant, because across the country, uh, within the first three hours of a child being abducted, there's a high probability that child's life was taken as well. And you know, statistically across the country, about 4,500 children are abducted, which is about 1% of the total number in relationship to, you know, high risk and stranger abduction. So the ch- this little girl walking potentially to her bus stop at such a late hour puts her in a very, very, um, you know, high risk situation for an offender. Now enter the 40. 40- two-year-old family friend covered with tattoos, including a swastika, who is a friend of the family. Listen to Nicole Parton. Audrey Cunningham's dad has a friend of his staying in a camper in their backyard. His name is Don Stephen McDougall. The 42-year-old sometimes gives Audrey a ride to the bus stop, or if she is running really late and misses the bus, he will take her to school. He occasionally babysits for Audrey when needed, his way of saying thanks for letting him live in the camper in their backyard. On Thursday, February 15, Audrey is in her house getting ready to walk to the bus stop like she does most mornings, and Don Stephen McDougall offers to give her a lift. And more, we're hearing from Sheriff Byron Lyons. Listen. He was, he was, uh, was probably taking her to the dropping off at the bus stop. And we do feel at this point that he was the last person who seen uh, Audrey. There has has been information found that there were some occasions that he he did drop her off at the bus stop or even take her to school if she missed the bus. Who is this guy? And if he asked her, if he asked her, hey, do you want me to take you to the bus stop? What is she going to say? She's an 11-year-old little girl, and he looks like that. He's intimidating. I'd be like, yeah, sure, whatever. He's got a big, fat Nazi swastika right there on his left shoulder. You can't miss it because he's so fond of posing for photos without his shirt on. I can't make out the rest of all those tattoos. They're all a big blur. Carla Castillo, this guy with the swastika tattoo on his shoulder... Who is he? So Don Stephen McDougall is somebody I, as an adult, would not want to be near. I can't imagine having a child around this man who, in March of 2007, was accused of attempting to engage in sexual contact with a girl under the age of 17. And so he has a conviction. There's been a lot of questions as to why he's not a registered sex offender. The uh, the conviction was not for something that apparently required him to do that, but it's still icky enough that you, as a parent, as a responsible adult, it feels like you know this is not someone you have around a child. So he was not required to register as a sex offender. Listen now to Lieutenant Craig Cummings. I also want to announce the Polk County Crime Stoppers reward has been increased to $10,000 for information leading to the arrest and prosecution of the person responsible. I also want to announce the Polk County Crime Stoppers reward has been increased to $10,000 for information leading to the arrest and prosecution of the person responsible for Audrey's disappearance. Chris McDonough joining us from the interview room, former homicide detective. Did you see these tattoos? Yes. Some of those tattoos obviously uh, come from inside you know, the prison system. Uh, there's information that this gentleman, told you. Uh, Mc, uh, McDougall, was affiliated with a group called the AB, which is the Aryan Brotherhood, which is a prison gang. Uh, And so this guy here would fit the mold in relationship to the PD uh, investigating him first and foremost. Well, he comes to the top of the shelf. Cheryl McCollum joining us, uh, 
Cold Case Research Institute Forensic Expert. Go ahead. The thing about the tattoos that sticks out for me is this guy is often wearing a white beater where they're exposed or no shirt at all, which tells me he's not hiding. He's not trying to hide who or what he is. Even in one of the photographs, he's making a hand sign that looks like the number one and the number two with his middle finger down. That also is for those letters A and B, the Aryan Brotherhood. So not only are the tattoos exposed, he wants you to know in a photograph who he is. You know what? That speaks volumes to me, Dr. Bethany Marshall. Why is this animal out of the prison system? Mm -hmm. And that's where you get these tattoos. Not the county jail like in Mayberry where Otis checks himself in and out. Talking about the pen. He has tattoos from the penitentiary. And he's not ashamed. Like Cheryl said... A swastika, the thing's got to be four inches tall, right there on his shoulder, which would show in a wife beater. He's yeah. holding a beer can in his hand. Well, and he's you know, I'm not going to find, if holding a cold <laughs> beer is not a felony, all right? But I'm telling yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I know. brazenly but, showing off, and it's on his Facebook. It's on his Facebook. That's where I saw it. He posted it. Nancy, he's prisoner identified. That means that he's not identified with being like a normal civilian out in the public. He's identified with that particular community that lives in penitentiaries. They they do have a community and uh, in terms of hierarchy, in terms of how they work out together, in terms of what kinds of tattoos they have. So I would wonder if this guy has not just been in prison once, but been in and out of the prison. Oh yeah, he has. We looked. Times, and that's why he's living in a trailer. We saw ten mugshots tonight. He probably doesn't have long-term gainful employment. He probably has short-term gigs. And I think it's a kind of weird that on this one picture he has his shirt off. He has a big belly, but he's completely covered in tattoos from the neck all the way down. I don't know. He has he has his pants on, so I don't know below the belt. Hold on, wait a minute. Why in the H E double L would you let this guy take your eleven year old to school? I mean, did he dupe the parents into thinking he's really a good guy? You know what? I, I do not want to vilify the parents when they are in a time of great distress. Not what I asked you. I asked you, did he dupe them? Yes, he probably did because, okay, so let me start again. Offenders, predators do not just groom a child. They groom the entire family. So usually they become good friends with the parents. Usually they offer to, offer to do favors for the kids and they ingratiate themselves. And it's not usually until they've been with the family for a long time that they start to molest the child. So I'm wondering how did the dad or grandparents know this guy? Well, I think it's OK to have a sex offender. Oh, I've got details on the sex offense. The prior uh, Lana Shadwick tried not to do a backflip when you hear this. McDougal allegedly attempted to engage in sex contact with a girl under 17. According to a grand jury in indictment, he removed another female from the bed where the victim was sleeping. He got in and pulled down the little girl's pajama bottoms and underwear. He was indicted. He got bonded at 25K. A year later, he pled guilty to enticing a child, a third degree felony in Texas. Okay. Cheryl McCollum. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but when I was trying cases in inner city Atlanta, a lot of my witnesses would be felons themselves, which I tell the jury up front because even the devil can tell the truth once in a while when he wants to. And I would drive around alone in my beat up Honda with convicted rapists, dopers, you name it. I did, was not afraid why. I don't know. But can these guys charm you? Did the, were the parents charmed into thinking it was okay for this guy to give their daughter a ride? Nancy, I'm not blaming a victim. These did guys I are charming you though. to blame a victim? No, but I... What I, is I, with you and Dr. Bethany? I am a crime victim. No, I don't want you to blame the victim. I'm asking about the perp, the person of interest. Could he have charmed the parents? No, and here's why. I don't know how in the world you could be charmed by somebody that's got not one, but three swastikas. And then they've got the and, double lightning bolt. Well, you need to explain what that means, Cheryl. Don't just throw it out without explaining it. Aryan nation, white supremacy. I don't get much help, guys. And they, 
they know good and well that that is not a tattoo that means anything else. And in combination with he's got ain't afraid, he's got barbed wire, he's got one and two, he's got a pit bull, he's got a map of the United States with stars and bars, the rebel flag. Every single thing on his body tells you he's a white supremacist. Okay, Nancy, the East Texas, unfortunately, is a heavy drug community, or it can be. Um, meth is prolific. Um, this area is supposed to be um, a, a, a meth area. If parents, when they're on, I, I've worked for Child Protective Services, I've been a family law judge and a prosecutor. When people are on drugs, they are dull to reality. And if they don't have a babysitter and you got to have a babysitter, you just grab the guy in the camper in the back with he supplying drugs. Guys, you're hearing Lana Shadwick right now. I don't have any information that anybody in that home was using drugs. But as far as that area being known for drugs, yes, that's true. We do know the so-called babysitter, Don Stephen McDougall, who has served time for child sex offenses has now been identified as a POI person of interest. What more do we know? More disturbing information. Take a listen to Sydney Sumner, Crime Online. On Thursday evening, as a statewide Amber Alert is issued for Audrey Cunningham, the man who was with her last, Don Stephen McDougall, is listing items for sale on Facebook Marketplace. Listed as all must go, the items include parts to an HVAC system, a set of weights, and an Everlast punching bag. A KPRC producer sends a message to McDougal about items for sale, and around 3 a.m., McDougal responds, but only once. Carla Castillo joining me, KBTX. That's not a good sign. So after Audrey Cunningham goes missing, after he reportedly is driving her to the bus stop and she never gets on the bus, he starts selling all his stuff online. That does not leave a good impression. It sounds to me like someone who's trying to get rid of everything he's got and maybe leave town. A long rap sheet going back as far as 2001. Joining us, as you know, is Lisa Shadwick, who's paralegal, has had contact with McDougal. What happened to your paralegal's boyfriend, Lana? Okay, Lana. Um, he got stabbed in August. I mean, he was stabbed by this guy in August. And this guy has been spotted in a dark blue SUV in and around downtown Livingston. Listen to Nicole Parton. Crime stories. Around 6.30 p.m. on Friday, February 16, Don Stephen McDougal is arrested and placed in the Polk County Jail, not for the disappearance of Audrey Cunningham, but on an unrelated aggravated assault with a deadly weapons charge. The public now finds out that McDougal has a criminal record dating back to 2001 for charges, and in 2008, authorities say he was convicted on a charge of enticing a child and was sentenced to two years. Years. Lana Shadwick joining us, a uh, high-profile lawyer out of Livingston, former judge and prosecutor. Lana, so this guy, the friend in the backyard camper, has been picked up on your paralegal boyfriend knifing. Is that right? That's why he's in jail right now. Thank God. That's correct. But this, this knifing, stabbing that occurred in the middle of the night uh, in August, it was in August. And so he was just now uh, arrested and indicted for that stabbing. Um, so he's in jail now behind bars where he can't hurt anyone. But this happened back in August and there's a lot of finger pointing. Now we're trying to figure out where was his vehicle spotted? Take a listen to Sheriff Byron Lyons, Polk County. One of the reasons that we're asking for the videos, we're trying to piece together a timeline of where he's been and, and uh, the, the travel that he took, the roadways that he took. So this area is just one that's in, in particular that we can say that we know that he was he was in. And so we're, we're making sure that we do extensive search of those areas. But the problem is, is that when we have a lot, and I know that people are concerned and people want to help. But a lot of time when we bring too many people into an area, it hinders uh, our efforts in being able to try to 
uh, to find and locate evidence. The police now desperately asking if you have seen this vehicle. Chris McDonough, what kind of car is it specifically? It's a uh, dark blue piece of uh, shit. Suburban. That's what it uh, is. It's very dirty, and they're looking for it in relationship to video or anything to that effect, probably because they locked him in to a story. And what they're looking for is to find some type of, you know, correlating evidence that would blow holes in that particular story. Southwest. It seems what others do. It is Ryan. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Lana Shadwick joining us, a lawyer out of Livingston. Is it true cops have the vehicle? Yes, they have the vehicle. And and there's uh, tapes of him at the donut shop across from the courthouse down from the jail uh, with the vehicle. Um, then they arrested him or, or took him or detained him and asked him questions. So they've got the vehicle now. And you know, in that video you're talking about, he looks very relaxed. He's kind of like leaned up on his vehicle, all propped up on it. I saw that. But what you just said, Lana Shadwick, is very, very important. Explain forensically the importance, Cheryl McCollum, of them having his vehicle. They're going to be able to take the mud and test it to see if this was right by that river. They are going to look for blood. They're going to look for hair. They're going to look for anything all that, that was left wheel? by her, maybe a toy, maybe something from her backpack that got torn off, like a little keychain. I hope she scratched the crap out of that guy. I hope she clawed, bit, scratched, kicked, all the things, all of them. You know something? They're going to look for anything that should not be there. Again, underwear, blood, large amounts of hair ripped clothing, toys, anything that should not have been left in that vehicle. Absolutely. And now another development. It could give some people hope. Not to me. Take a listen to Sheriff Byron Lyons. We feel strongly today that that backpack that was found is a high probability that it's going to be Audrey's. A backpack has been found. Cheryl McCollum, what does that tell you? It tells me we've got a direction of travel. It tells me we've got a item that this child would not have left behind willingly. It also tells me the location of where that backpack is in relation to the bus stop. Here's what I think we're looking at, Nancy. He was seen at a gas station at 9 o'clock. Without her on the video. Without her on the video. So that's a two-hour window. So she's less than an hour away in any given direction. So where that backpack is, they should fan out almost, you know, think about it as a spiral. And you just go out and out and out. She's going to be there near that waterway or in that water somewhere. Carla Castillo joining us, KBTX. Exactly where was the backpack found? It was found near, uh, according to the sheriff, it was near the dam, the Lake Livingston Dam. Lana Shadwick, tell me about Lake Livingston Dam. The lake was built, man-made. It is huge. It's the second largest lake in the state of Texas. Um, it connects to the Trinity River, um, which goes into believe, the San Jacinto River, which goes into uh, the Gulf. Um, and it is a moving um, body of water, and I hope that baby's not out there. You know, I'm just thinking about what you're saying and what Cheryl McCollum is saying. Everybody jump in if you have a thought on this. Of course, I don't need DNA to tell me if it's John David or Lucy's backpack. I know what it looks like, and I know what's in it, because I look at it every morning, every afternoon, and every night before it goes back to school. Uh, one of the few clues in the disappearance. Okay, so the backpack was in Lake Livingston, is what they're saying. But she was found in Lake, or I'm sorry, in the Trinity River. So I pulled up a map. Maybe you all can help me with this one. Um, I mean, I guess that would be the road. I just am not sure how that, how they would get all the way down there. But I'll show it to you guys, and then maybe I'll look it up even more. But it says Lake Livingston, Texas to Trinity River, Texas. So I'm assuming 
Am I just not seeing more water? I see this, this, there's the lake, but where does the lake go into the river? That's what I'm just not seeing, I guess. Maybe it's behind that sign, but I'll keep looking. I'll keep looking around. Um, oh, I forgot to show you guys. <laughs> I thought that I shared this. It's because um, this is a overlay. Sorry. There's the picture I was trying to show you guys. Um, it says Lake Livingston's up here. That's where they found the book bag, but they found her in the Trinity River. We'll have to like look through this a little bit more, but um, yeah. Oh my Lord have mercy. Do you think that maybe she flowed, flowed down river from that spot? I don't know. Okay. Let me get back over to Nancy. Um, if I can find her, there she is. Eleven-year-old girl Audrey Cunningham is a red Hello Kitty backpack that she was supposed to carry to school with her on Thursday morning, Feb fifteen, the morning after Valentine's Day. Usually leaves the house around seven a.m. She never made it to the bus stop, half a mile away. She was given a ride by a family friend covered in Nazi swastikas. He was spotted without her at nine a.m. at a local gas station. Whatever went down, went down in two hours. Would you agree or disagree, Cheryl? I don't think this guy has the brains or the wherewithal to hide somebody away and continue to visit them and torture them and rape them. Whatever happened to her happened between seven and nine. Absolutely. And if you look at pre and post behavior, Nancy, you've got a guy that is vacant for that period of time, but he doesn't know the school hasn't notified anybody. So he's working very quickly. This same person finds it more important to sell items on Facebook and respond to people instead of looking for this child. Chris McDonough, jump in. I agree with uh, Cheryl. I agree. Cheryl is 1,000% correct. And I think what's happening, you know, the sad part of this, if in fact that poor child is in that water, uh, it'll be seven to 10 days before her body potentially would surface depends on the currents there. And if that body does surface, you know, God forbid it is in the water, then that could, it could surface anywhere. And so I suspect the PD, if they're going to lean towards that body of water, we're going to see some movement around that lake pretty rapidly. Carla Castillo joining us. KBTX news has the person of interest the Aryan Brotherhood member, has he been taking police to locations or identifying police for police locations to search? So the sheriff during his latest press conference said that, yes, there have been some instances. He didn't say where, but he said that McDougal has been taking them to locations. To He has been asked, where were you? in the last in, in so many hours and he has apparently been taking them to those locations to the locations where he says he was right correct uh, i take that with a box of salt so cheryl mccollum uh chris mcdonough lana shadwick carl castillo have you noticed that very often defendants will tell you half truths or they might tell you a lot of the story, but they'll leave out a significant portion. Like, yeah, I went to the gas station and I went, stopped at Dunkin' Donuts and then I did this and that. But they're leaving out something in the middle of that. A hundred percent. Right. So I, I, where he dumped the child, the sheriff is saying they have not given up hope that Audrey is alive. But wouldn't this be a simple matter of pinging his cell phone, Cheryl McCollum? Tracking it could be unless he they did. turned it off. But I'll tell you something. What law enforcement has already done is brilliant because they have locked him in. And I guarantee you they have videoed him saying I went here and here and here. And they've got him on the record and on video saying where all he went. Well, now he can't backtrack. Let's hear from Lana. Okay, speaking of tracks, they've got mud tracks from his vehicle along the lake. Whether, you know, he's fishing or whatever he said he was doing. There's a bumper of his that hit a tree. They've got that bumper evidence 
Um, the, and of course, they've got the video and camera footage from the area that the sheriff said yesterday during the uh, press conference that video from individuals out there has been very, very helpful. Um, and what that means, I don't know, but he says it's been very helpful. Cheryl McCollum, Chris McDonough, what is he doing out there bumping into a tree? Why would he do that unless he was in haste at the same location, the same lake where the Hello Kitty backpack is found? He's in panic mode here when if, in fact, uh, you know, he is dumping those evidence items there and he's backing out potentially. You know, some of these guys get such tunnel vision uh, after, you know, the the crime has gone down uh, that they start to, you know, panic. And that these are the kind of problems that occur, you know, small accidents such as this. Uh, but he's given an opportunity to cooperate from the PD. And the Cheryl, what Cheryl said earlier is a thousand percent, again, correct, because they want to lock him in. And then, of course, they can have problems like this and say, well, you know, tell me about the bumper on your car. How did you get that? Absolutely. So you've got somebody that has said I was with her that morning. He forgot to hide the backpack appropriately. That's another mistake that puts himself at a location that I believe is going to end up really hurting any kind of defense he could put up later. He is putting himself where her body will be located in the general area. Remember when Scott Peterson had trouble uh, either backing in or out mm-hmm. of the marina after he dumped Lacey's body. He was backing out. Remember that? Yes. Yep. On a normal day, he probably wouldn't have had that problem. But with the nerves, whether he realized it or not, he did have a problem. This guy here bams into a tree with a distinctive bumper mark. Wonder what that is. What could that be? But it's his all right. So why run into a tree? Why in a hurry? Why that mistake? Why in the location of her Hello Kitty backpack? As we close, all eyes on the gathering law enforcement. We have learned a body has been found. And in the last moments, it has been identified as Audrey. Listen. At this time, I sadly announced that Audrey's body was located at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. As a result of today's developments, I will discontinue the Amber Alert for Audrey. And I, I want to thank DPS, Department of Public Safety, for all their help in this alert. The information that ha- we have gathered in this criminal investigation is substantial. The Polk County Sheriff's Office investigators, the Livingston Police Department, and the Texas Rangers uh, the game wardens, the FBI, Harris County Sheriff's Office, the uh, uh, San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office, the District Attorney's Office um, in uh, Trinity County, in Liberty County. Uh, it's just an outpouring of love from all of our law enforcement partners. My heart aches with this news, and I express with my deepest sympathies and condolences to everyone who knew, who cared for, and loved Audrey. The Sheriff's Office, we will continue to process the evidence that has been gathered to ensure that the justice for Audrey. And at this time, I will turn the podium over to the Polk County District Attorney, Ms. Shelley Sam. Thank you, Byron. <clears throat> My name is Shelley Sitton, and I am your Polk County District Attorney. I just want to take a few moments to explain how we're going to move forward from here. Based on all of the evidence, that law enforcement has collected. They are in the process of preparing the appropriate arrest warrants for Don Stephen McDougall. At this time, we believe the appropriate arrest warrant is going to be for capital murder in the death of Audrey Cunningham. Be sure to join us for Wednesday's Crime Stories when we bring you the very latest on this. Dang, they just cut it off like that. Oh, wow. So I'm really surprised that, um. That she, sorry, that she was, that she was able to do that. Um, so let me flip it. Let me get the um, banners and stuff down. So it's a little bit easier for you guys to talk to me. Um, 
Oh, I don't want to do that. I was about to leave the live, y'all. Let me turn my camera on. I was about to leave the live just then. I was like, that wouldn't have been good. So let me see if I can. I wanted to show you guys this picture of uh, oh, Don, Stephen McDougal, and Joshua. So we can officially say the dude likes to wear a wife beater. And he likes to show off that tattoo. So we can all say that, you know, they knew. Smiling. Smiling. I thought that, I thought either, I thought that it would happen on our live, Trisha, because we usually are, I'm not even on the screen. We're usually always live. I swear when news breaks, like we're live and it's like, what? <laughs> um, you guys always come in the chat and you're like, something's going on. Um, and I'm like, Oh, what? But let me see if I can get onto Facebook. I don't know where I'm at. I'm like, I don't even know where I'm at. Um, see if it'll let me like pull it up without pulling up everything. I think it will. Oh, okay. It's way too small though. Let me see. Yeah, it's not like, it's kind of coming up to very fuzzy. Um, let me see if there's a different way to pull it up. Oh, wait, there we go. I just want to make sure it doesn't have like your name on there or anything, Doodlebug. Okay, Doodlebug sent me that, so I was just making sure it was, it was good. It was all good to show. Um, but I guess it's for, from the home to where the backpack was to where the body was located. And I'll share this with you. Um, here because I'm not good with maps. I'm, I wish I was. I want to be so good with maps. I'm, I'm learning, but um, you know, having one eye, it gets a little challenging sometimes. I actually realized today I don't even look out of my peripheral vision in my real eye anymore. I just always turn my whole head. I didn't realize I did that. So I guess her home is up at the top and then they found the backpack down by the um, gazebo nature preserve. It looks like down there. Um, and then the body was found so you see the Trinity River now. Now I can see the Trinity River. Okay. On the other map, I couldn't see it. I'm like, where's the river though? I guess I was looking for something bigger. Probably was. Um, I wonder how long that river is exactly. I could look that up. It is 710 miles. So did he just want her to float all down to the Gulf of Mexico? I think that was his plan. But it didn't work out that way. And now I'm wondering if it was because the tides were up so high because of all. The, I don't know if they got a lot of rain, but we've been getting rain like crazy around here. And so maybe that's why. Yeah, you were really close, KW. That was really close. Um. I just hope she didn't feel anything. I have a feeling that she, I had a feeling that I have a feeling something was going on before this, that maybe he did something prior to this. She looks like a very sweet little girl. She looks like the type that, that could almost be a little naive. Like most children are like they all are. And she may be, thought, you know, her dad maybe isn't there for three or four months at a time. If he's fishing, I'm not sure how long you're out of sea when you're doing that, but you're out a long time. Maybe she thought of him as almost like a father figure because she didn't have her dad there all the time. And so there's this older guy that maybe he gives her a little more attention. And she thinks of that as like in a positive way. And then, um, you know, they, they groom, and then maybe it's don't tell daddy, mom, don't tell daddy because mommy's not in the picture, right? So then maybe when she's, he starts to bring mommy back in the picture, maybe something happened because six months ago, that's when he started reaching out to Cassie to get something set up or, you know, he started sending her pictures of um, her daughter and stuff, which to me, I don't know why he'd have to send her pictures because if she has Facebook, can't she just get on his Facebook and look if she's blocked, make another account. There's a way to go around that, you know, to see pictures. And I think he was hurting her all along. You, you auto you too. And I think she said enough's enough. Yeah. I think she said she was like, I'm going to tell my daddy when he gets home. Or I'm going to tell mom when we go to see her. Or maybe she led on and that's what she was going to do. 
Um, because he was trying to remember meet up with her mother the next day, which she probably didn't even know anything about that. She probably didn't even know. I hope she almost didn't know. I don't know if I want to, I don't know. I do, but I don't, you know, because that would be sad. Uh, I think she was, yeah, I think she was aware of her surroundings too. I think she was just susceptible to be, you know, to be like, look at him as like almost a father figure. And it's sad. It's so sad. Like he's something else. Um, let me see what that other one was. All that other picture was the one that we showed the other day, I believe, of him, him in the car. Oh my Lord have mercy. Like, why do people even do this? Like right here. Why do people do that? Smiling. He's not even smiling that much. He looks like he knows. He looks like he's like, I shouldn't be in this picture with kids. Don't send this to my probation officer. Oh, wow. I have a little man. Just for finding it? Damn. For real, for real. You think, you know, I mean, if you did, if you did the drugs threw them away, you think you'd be mad. So that's what I'm wondering was, well, I've heard that the mom never had custody of her at all. And so I'm wondering what happened there too. I'm wondering. Um, Cause normally you'll do things to get your child back. You'll, if she thought for, okay, I'm sorry. If I was her mother, if I was the mother, if I was the mother and that's just me and I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just saying this is what I would do and I don't have kids. So take it with a grain of salt. But if I was her mother and I knew that this guy was in a camper staying out back living, my ass would be on the phone with CPS every single day. I'd be on the phone with cops. I'd be on the phone with CPS. I would say, what are you guys doing? Letting this guy be around my daughter. And I mean, even if she didn't know, like who, what his past was, which I don't believe that, you know, I would, I'm sorry. I would still be, I would be calling, be like my, you know, I don't have custody, but I, you know, my, the baby's father does. He's never there. This is who my daughter's in the care of. She's not even in the care of her father or her grandmother that's supposed to have custody of her. She's in the care of this guy. Like, that's all you have to say. CPS, go check on my kid. And go check on her when, you know, grandpa ain't there. Because we don't want old grandpa and dad to be home when things are, you know, well, grandpa's, when grandpa's home, things are good. But yeah, that's what I have for you guys tonight. You know, just crazy. If you want to hear a more, um, I guess I can tell you like a funnier story at the end of the live tonight. Sounds like someone's racing out there. Um I fell today. So I'll tell you, it's kind of funny. I didn't hurt myself that much, but I was trying to get, um, the trash together, like out back. And I had this huge bag. I bought 30 gallon trash bags on accident for a small trash can, like, you know, regular size trash can. So it was huge. And I was trying to tie it up and I went to walk back in the house and I fell and like my arms just been killing me all night. So sorry if I've been like wincing, but every time I move it, I'm like, Oh, I fell on my arm and like, um, my, my leg and Vincent was like, that was like in slow motion. <laughs> and I was like, it felt like it was in slow motion. So I'm okay, but I, I'm just starting to feel it in my back and stuff. CPS won't do squat. Yeah. It's just, I, I wonder if your child is taken from you, I guess you, where do you go? The court, I guess, to get custody back. Like I'm really bad with this. I told you guys on the earlier live, I'm not good with custody because I've never had to deal with it. My parents were um, married through, you know, like they, I didn't have a divorce, even a divorce in my family. So yeah, I'm okay. Dream catcher. I'm just a little sore. I wonder, I don't know if I can pull up my arm to show you, but it's just scratched up. Yeah, I'm okay. I fell. Um, thank goodness. We just bought all that furniture <laughs> because I fell on the couch kind of, and then the carpet we have out there and then the dog, the big dog bed. So it kind of braced my fall, but it was literally slow motion. And Vincent was like, he ran in out of the kitchen. He's like, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, that made me feel good. <laughs> it made me feel good. Because I, I mean, I know he would always be concerned, but the way he dropped everything and ran, I was like, oh. So, hey, Dollar Sterling. Hmm. 
he might be he might have groomed three females yeah in that family um but her mother was clever for him was too clever for him yes dollar yes she was she's like i'm not falling for that shit she wanted to but you could tell she knew better you know like she I really do think at one point she would have tried to get her daughter back. I do believe that because she was, she really was saying to him, I don't want to do anything that's going to mess up my relationship with my daughter. But at the same time, I just would like to know what was in like, you know, in the, the plans for that. And I wonder how she lost custody to begin with. I'm assuming it was rugs and I'm assuming maybe they found him in her system. I don't know. Yeah, ladybug. I'm okay. I just fell. It wasn't nothing with like being dizzy or nothing. Um, Vincent said he thinks he distracted me because I was out there and he's like, oh, the neighbors are going to see you. And so I tried to like hurry and rush in. <laughs> so I was like, you got me. You got me good. So now I'm going to go get him really good because I told him earlier, I said, if I get out of this live tonight and you're sleeping with all these lights off, I'm coming out here. I went out there earlier to grab a drink. All the lights are out. He's sleeping. I was like, oh, we'll get you. I got him a card for Valentine's Day that sings to him. I'm going to go put it in his ear. It's a really cute card. We have card contests every time there's an anniversary or a Valentine's Day. So, well, thank you guys for being here tonight. I'm like, I was looking at our, um, I think it was the seven cases I said, so, or wait, I don't know, moved 10 cases since the, the seventh. It was something crazy that we've covered involving children. Um, we are good. We're good on, you know, dealing with children for a while. I just can't handle life. So if you guys missed the press conference from today and you guys want to watch it, I did stream it earlier today um, around five o'clock. And then we also, um, I streamed Ruby Frank and Jody Hildebrandt's sentencing hearing because they had that today. And we, if you want to listen to Joe um, Ruby's Oscar speech, because it took her 15 minutes to get through it, it was, it was terrible. You could barely understand her, but she is sentenced. Um, if you want to watch that, that's on the playlist as well. Um, for noon. Now, another case that we're dealing with that we cover is Shana Gardner. Um, Shana is going to court right now. Um, she is saying that she, I don't know, her and Jose Baez, they've got some crap up their sleeve. So make sure you're following me for that case, because there are going to be some new things that are coming out. They're talking about two more um, people being arrested in this case. And so I don't know, it's going to get wild. It's going to get wild. So make sure you're following me for all the true crime cases. We do talk true crime daily here and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Have a great night guys. Bye.